are doing um, exploit in the kingdom of God. Thank God for him and thank God for his wife. Once again, let's celebrate Mommy Downs. Listen. If she says Pastor Prince is not coming in again, that's the end. Yes. One of the things that God gave women is the power of influence. I told my wife, was it two years ago? You invited me and you made one statement. That statement makes me to always want to prepare more whenever I'm coming. When I gave my When Reverend was saying, David, this is about David. I suppose if I were David tonight, you are welcome. I picked the word. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Let's celebrate Mama again. Every member of this assembly, celebrate yourself. Uh -uh. Is this how you want to celebrate yourself? Hallelujah. I came with uh, some of our people. The man that drove you, he also drove me like he's born today. You know where I sat, I was I was using my leg to apply the brake. It's okay, it's, you know. <laughs> he said he was praying. I didn't know. He was praying that uh, he should join me for the ministration tonight. Me, I didn't know. Uh, but something came up. My wife needed to go out with our car, the car we came with to church. And it was around to five. She had an assignment that I gave her. And I said, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So I just called him. And he said, sir, I watched the program online yesterday. Is it Reverend Downs? I'm coming. I want to go. I, I, he has been with me for 24 years. Celebrate Evangelist Chukudi. Eziala. He contested for federal rep this last election. So I told him before the election that don't bother him if you lose. It's your first attempt going federal. But he made an impression. He's one of the Christians. You know, I told, I told us last year when I came, we are stirring up Christians to go into politics. If we don't take steps, if we keep praying and praying, and we don't go to join the parties, even from the world level, they will keep giving us Muslim, Muslim ticket, Hindu, Hindu ticket, and so on like that. Prayer alone is not enough. And he had my voice. I started that, that crusade like five years ago. I told them in church, every one of you go and begin to join meetings. Join your town meeting. And he's presently the chairman of the Imo State Ibos Association in Ibadan. I told you his testimony last, last year. I will still say it when I get to a point. My daughter is also here, my, the first sign of my strength. That's uh, uh, Eniola Afolabi, a 300 level student of uh, mass communication. Then I came with our media man, that's uh, Brother Precious Adekunjo. Please, can we celebrate them? Hallelujah. I've done all the introductions. Amen. Get ready for tonight. The team on seizing fruitfulness. I will try not to move around. I want to try not to move around. Uh, because God gave me a syllabus to cover. And uh, where's our okay? I have up to up to what time? 7 30. Yes. I keep to time. On seizing fruitfulness, which means uh uh, you 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 become fruitful always. Now, when you say unceasing fruitfulness, it means that your your fruitfulness is not tied to a particular or peculiar season. You know, there are some fruits that we see during dry season that we don't see during rainy season. 
like my son was asking me was it last week he says daddy i need mango i said you can't get mango now he's gone but what we are about to learn these few days hear me hear me there, there are principles that will help you to be fruitful in every season principles that will help you to be fruitful wherever you know apples don't grow in nigeria but the principles that we are going to learn today and from every servant of god that will be coming including our father in the lord my father in the lord bishop they are principles that will help us now and i've told you and i'll keep telling us that life is not governed by miracles life is governed by what principles now once you find and apply the right principles hear me you will get the results you desire wherever and whenever i told them in our church if there's anything raining in nigeria now it is what we call the japa syndrome everybody is japan it doesn't exist in the dictionary <laughs> the reason is because people believe that the level of success they want can only happen in their life outside nigeria but where i live i live at a level i keep seeing trailers of cement coming in daily and going out empty and we know that a bag of cement is not less than five thousand and it comes into our area on a daily basis and does not go out carrying it it means that people are still building it means that things are still happening in our country nigeria Do you also know that there are people abroad that keeps calling us pastors in Nigeria to pray for them? When they say it, I ask. I usually say, I think that money falls from the trees abroad. Hmm. Now, it made me to now conclude that until you understand and apply the right principles, you can fail anywhere. So, on seizing fruitfulness, I told you I want to be because God said, follow this syllable. Something in me wants to move away from, move around. But I just have to follow the instruction. On seizing fruitfulness, it's all about being consistently productive having good and glorious things to show always not occasionally now which means that if you get the principles right the people that saw you last year when they see you this year your life should become to, to show some things that will make them to wonder <laughs> And when I'm talking about wonder, I'm talking about the, on the positive side. Uh, some good things happen in your life. They shouldn't meet you the same place and the same way they left you. So, unceasing fruitfulness, don't forget, is being consistently productive. And if you look at our anchor scripture, Jeremiah 17, verse 8. In fact, I didn't see it on the ambulance on time. The day God's servant called me and told me about the meeting, I got home and God started speaking to me from scriptures. I took my phone, I spoke what I was talking as God into my phone. What on the phone in my mind? Then three days ago, I said, let me even confirm. And I saw that it was the same thing. So let's look at Jeremiah 17 and verse 8. Can we have it on screen? Jeremiah 17 
and verse 8. Now, and I want you to look at the scriptures very, very well. There is something that that scripture is going to show us. Do you have somebody on the system? While we wait for our, our, our carry on from here. Jeremiah 17 verse 8 says, For he shall be, follow this, as a tree planted by the water, thank you, by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruits. Now, look at the scriptures clearly. If you study the scriptures clearly, you will see that whatsoever you see on the tree is determined by what the root is connected to. Now, it says the leaves will always be green, both in drying and in rainy season. Now, the fruits will, it will always yield fruits in every season. So, whenever anybody goes around that tree, they may look at the tree as a magical tree, or let's use the word in church, a miracle tree. Now, church people will say, ah, ah, what kind of a miracle tree is this? This is a miracle. But listen, nobody knows that whatsoever is happening on the tree is being determined by what? What the root is connected to. These things are important. I will bring it to your remembrance again. So whatever is here is not determined by what we see. Hello? Whatever we see here is being determined by what? The connection down. The root. I now did an experiment. At the level church, also is. We also have a school there. I've relocated. My wife is pastoring the Liberty Church now. Liberty School. We now fed, we we fed the whole company. So one morning after my wife had gone to the Liberty School, I resumed at the level church to take care of the school and the church. It's a green one. I was just going around and I saw something like a small tree growing on the fence. Ah. And the Lord said, look at it. I said, why would this be growing on the fence? We have flooded all the floor. We've cemented the floor. So I said, this is rubbish. I go pull it. As I was pulling it, I discovered that I was pulling it. was still coming out. It was still coming out. It was still coming out. By the time it came out, God began to teach me something. I now saw that the root was even longer than that plant. The Lord now said to me, son, you cemented the floor, but the root of this plant has gone beyond the cement. Where the root is, it has access to water. He says, son, do you know that it is dangerous to compare yourself with a man whose covenant back up you don't know? I will tell you some things today. I know, I took it. 
if not that uh, it dried up before today, I wanted to bring it to you. Just like this word of God is teaching us. It spreads out its root. Where it is standing may look dry. But where the root is, there is abundance of water. Don't mind him. That's how he responds to the word of God. They know him in our church. But since 23 years ago, that's how he used to shout. That's how he responds. So they call him Otoro. There was a day somebody came to our church. The person who thought he was mad, the person became afraid. He changed, had to change the seat. We preached to a point and he screamed, yeah! And the person said, ah, kill me. <laughs> so, please concentrate. The way we all respond to the word of God is different. Let's go back. I do some things now. I'm walking away from my notes again. I wrote here, it is important, you know, here, that the, that the source of the tree is what determines the continuous product, production of the tree. I'm coming somewhere. Which means it is the root that determines what happens to the tree. The production strength of the tree is determined by the connection of the root to water. Now listen. God was taking me around. I now started walking around in the compound. There's a place I planted. We planted sour soap. We planted lemon. We also planted orange. Then in front, we planted in front of the church. We planted coconut trees. The man that came to plant said, Sir, you will start eating from the sour soap after three and a half years. You start eating from the orange after three and a half years. You start eating from the getting from the fruit from the lemon after three and a half years. I said, What about the coconut? He said, Sir, it will take nine years. I said, why nine? He said, it will take nine years because it will not start producing up there until it finds the source of water that will never, that will never run dry. We are going somewhere. So I have eaten of the sour soap several years. But I'm still waiting for the coconut. Now, that's why we are still talking about the tree. Interpreting the scripture. The level of what the root is connected to will determine how productive the trees will be. I come again. The level of what the root is connected to 